Hi, I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And I'm Charles Epting of HR Harmer in Midtown Manhattan. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. Michael, one thing I've seen a couple of people mention uh, in the, the feedback we've gotten is that people want to hear a little bit about us. Here we are asking people these questions and um, uh, trying to see into the future of the hobby, You know, asking them to look into their crystal ball about where you know the direction things are going to go um you know in a post covid philatelic world but i think it would be great for us to i mean you and i know each other but maybe let the listeners um get to know us a little bit as well so how did yeah. you get your start in um in philately typical story uh my my mother and father are both immigrants to this country they they uh at when i was three years old they moved over from from england um i know they left their business behind and uh kind of said what are we going to do now, what do you want to do? My father had uh, had never had a really a, he'd never worked for anyone else. He'd just been a uh, started his own business as a gun shop uh, uh, car dealership selling exotic cars. Um, so he decided, well, I'm you know I've been collecting coins and stamps since I was eight years old. I'm going to start doing that. Um, <clears throat> so he started by putting in ads in papers, uh, buying locally from people and then splitting up the collections and sending them to different auction houses that uh, and and receiving checks that way um, about that was in 1993 about five years later eBay came out and he kind of had this idea um, why send it off to other people when I can take photos of it myself and sell my own material my myself um, and he started that I I don't think he started with the traditional model that we have that we incorporate now where we start everything at 99 cents he built up a customer base listing items at for specific prices and then as we built a customer base over the over the years he um switched it to 99 cents auctions um at eight years old it's kind of the same age he started collecting he brought me into it uh, sat me down next to him and showed me how to use a scott catalog uh, had me pick out the designs to find the stamps and that kind of got me hooked. I, I never really caught the coin bug from him. It was always just purely stamps. So uh, from eight years old, I've been f photographing uh, stamps, kind of looking at their design. And then as I got older, I was able to understand the value of them more and started learning the history behind them and started uh, preparing them for sale. And that's kind of how I got my my way into the business here at 22 I think or 23 I found uh, I literally just googled young stamp collectors because there was no one I knew of my age uh, who was doing this alongside of me of course there are all over the country all over the world but I, I didn't know of it I found the young philatelic leaders fellowship contacted Alex he was more than uh, more than happy to welcome me in uh, and um, brought me to my first show in uh, in Milwaukee in 2013 I think 2013 that was and it's been uh, uphill or it's been uh, smooth sailing not uphill it's smooth sailing <laughs> the exact then. opposite of right. what you're trying to say exactly yeah it's been smooth sailing ever since then um, we 350 400,000 transactions on eBay over 100,000 positive feedback you know we really really support eBay because they've really supported us as a organization as a uh, dealer of stamps if you will so um, that's kind of how we got our start in five years ago we moved into the building that I'm in now uh, after a couple key consignment deals that we made with some large dealers around the country it allowed us to buy a larger facility we went from uh, two employees to to 20 and now we've got a sizable organization selling stamps online that's fantastic. And I, I love hearing, um, you know, the, the, you, the seeds were planted, obviously, with your family and your father, but mm -hmm. how the, the YPLF, um, uh, I'm sure, sort of helped uh, make you feel, again, when you talk about finding other young people, they're yeah. out there. There's mm -hmm. just no way we would ever come across them. We wouldn't have met if it weren't for exactly. social media and the YPLF. So I think it's great to hear about how that, again, the, the, the business was there for you to come into, but yeah. it sounds like for you to find your own way, it really took um, some of that camaraderie and companionship. Yeah, well, not only that is that 
I'd never been to a stamp show before. And at stamp shows, we've met probably half of our consigners, half of the people that we do business with now, I've met directly at a stamp show. So Alex bringing me to my first stamp show, introducing me to the actual philatelic world um, has allowed our business to, to flourish by just the connections that we're making. Sometimes we've had to travel uh, 2,000 miles across the country just to meet someone that was 100 miles from us uh, in New Hampshire. That, that turned out to be a terrific deal, but because we hadn't had an introduction to them. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So what about you? It's, it's interesting. You've been around this since you were very young and it's a, mm. a family business and, and um, I'm the exact opposite. I collected just about everything growing up, whether it was fossils or books or baseball cards, you name it, except for stamps, coins even. Mm. Um, never had any interest in stamps. Um, just never really. I don't know. Just for, for whatever <laughs> reason, that was the one um, gap in my, my collecting interests. Um, until I got to college, I was um, I was studying history in college and Um, very interested in the 1920s and 1930s and wondered what kind of stamps they would have been using at the time went on ebay and found out you could buy maybe i even bought from you guys i don't know (laughs) Uh, but i found out you could buy you know 100 stamps for a dollar i thought stamps you know you see stamps on the news the inverted jenny Mm -hmm. and i thought stamps were for rich people and here i was (laughs) a, a poor starving college student who could buy hundreds upon hundreds of stamps you could buy you know, like the entirety of the 1960s or 70s in stamps Mm -hmm. for pennies. And I was just fascinated. So all of my fraternity brothers thought I was very strange. They um, made a lot of excuses and a lot of apologies for me when uh, girls would come over to the fraternity house because there's this guy working (laughs) on a stamp collection. Um, So it really made me uh, very popular at school. But but I I got bitten by the bug. I was 19 or 20 years old. I was not um, raised with this. No one in my family collects. It was really something I had to... Um, discover on my own. So, so that's how I got collecting. And, and like yourself, I Googled, are there other young people <laughs> who do this? Am I weird for doing this? And I found the YPLF. That's how I got to know Alex. And uh, Gretchen Moody was at the APS at the time. Yep. She was um, the, the education um, uh, coordinator. And I joined the YPLF. My first show was Hartford 2014. So you're a couple of years after your first show. And um, and I, I just fell in love with it. I, I said, this is amazing. I want to keep traveling. I want to keep collecting stamps. So um, the way I got into my current situation, um, I received a letter in the mail that said, your free trip to Monaco. And I promptly threw it away uh, because, <laughs> bam, nobody gets a free trip to Monaco. I did the exact same thing the yeah, first I was time. Just like, All right. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's nothing. So I'm, I'm hanging out with a couple of my philatelic friends, and they were like, hey, are you going to Monaco with us? And I said, what are you guys talking about there? They said, you should have gotten an invite. Um, and, and to explain, um, Alex Hyman is a member of the club du Monte Carlo, which is a very prestigious, um, uh, limited membership club based out of Monte Carlo. And the president of the club du Monte Carlo, Patrick Macellis, uh, was very generous about, um, inviting young people from around the world, not just America, but Belgium and India and the UK to come to, there's a, a stamp show in Monaco, um, every other year in November or December. Um, that is the cream of the crop of stamp shows. It, it's unlike a stamp. It's the Rolls Royce of stamp shows. So um, Patrick was very generous about inviting young people who Alex would identify as being particularly interested and committed. Um, Alex identified me. Um, I misinterpreted the letter. So luckily they were able to get me a, another application. And, um, and and I was able to travel to Monaco. That was in December of 2015 so this is mm-hmm. maybe a year and a half after my first stamp show um and at this point i had no idea i was gonna i want i did not want to go into the business i was a collector i maybe wanted to exhibit maybe wanted to write some articles wanted to keep with philately but had no intention of um no interest in going into the hobby professionally um so i go to monaco um while there i was introduced to two gentlemen dieter michelson and carl louis who are the uh, managing directors of Heinrich Kohler Auction House and Kornfila Auction House in Germany and Switzerland, respectively. And they said, um, are you interested in coming over to Germany to intern at an auction house? And I said, I'm up for it. I'll try it. I don't think this is what I want to do, but if I can. They said, well, you know, we'll take care of accommodations and everything. Why don't you just come see what it's like? And I, at this point, still had no real expectations that I would um, go into the business. So 
I'm over in Germany in January of 2016. Um, within three or four days of being in their offices in Germany at Heinrich Kohler, I said, I have to do this. I want yeah. to do this for the rest of my life. I can't see myself doing anything else. I thought maybe I would go to graduate school or, or something. I didn't really know yet. Um, and then this fell in my lap and I said, I want to do this. And they explained to me that they had an auction house in Southern California, coincidentally 12 miles from where I was living. Wow. So I had to travel 6,000 miles to get a job 12 miles away. <laughs> Funny, like you said, I yeah. have to travel cross country to meet a consigner. So I had to go to Germany to get a job in Orange County, California. I joined the company full time as soon as I got back to the States. That was um, right before the New York 2016 International Show. So when we talked to Wade, that show was very special to me because that was my uh, my first real big stamp show I went to as an employee of an auction house. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been with HR Harmer a little bit more than four years now. Um, in the last year and a half or so, uh, we decided that our company was founded in New York City. We'd been in California about a dozen years or so, and we wanted to return to our roots, come back to New York City. So basically, we decided we were going to pack up shop as soon as our lease ended in Tustin, California. Um, uh, as great as California was, again, I'm born and raised Southern California. I'm always going to have a soft spot for it, but um, there's something about Midtown Manhattan that is, mm -hmm. is, you know, spiritually in the stamp world, Manhattan is where the big sales happen, the big deals go down. It's where, it, you know, as with most things in life, Manhattan is, um, you know, so important uh, for the trade. Um, so that was in May of last year. We packed up shop in California, moved cross country. I've been in New York a little bit more than a year now um, with, with H.R. Harmer. And, and like you said, it's been, um, well, Mostly smooth sailing, of course, with <laughs> any job like this, there's going to be yeah. um, trials and tribulations. But for the most part, it's just been the, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And I can't see myself doing anything else. So that was, again, I, it oddly took me, um, you know, traveling uh, to another continent to take a job in my own backyard. But yeah. I'm so blessed and so fortunate that I did. Well, it's, that's how it goes. And that's why these stamp shows are so important. You, you know, never but, know what's going to happen. You're right. Yeah. You you go and, and maybe you meet someone who you broker a deal with, or maybe you just meet someone you become friends with. It doesn't yeah. always have to be. But but uh, uh, Alex, for making those connections, and um, again, so many of the donors to the YPLF, or somebody like Patrick, who is so mm -hmm. generous with bringing. Yeah. You went to Monaco the next, so 2017. Yeah. I saw you in Monaco. Yeah, that's where we uh, met the first time. That's where we met the first time. That's right. I thought I'd bumped into you before that. But no, we met in Monica for the first time. So yeah. again, yeah, you're right. These shows are so important for bringing us together. One of those things where you just say yes sometimes and see yeah. what happens. Yeah, you got to. You got to. And I'd, I'd advise the same for anyone who uh, who's considering going to their first stamp show or contacting the YPLF. Uh, you you just don't know what's going to happen. Again, I, yeah. when I contact, and, and contacting Alex with the YPLF was the first domino that fell. Yeah. Um, little did I know that when I submitted my application, it was indirectly going to move me to New York. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting. Had I known, maybe I would have been more hesitant. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, no, it, 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 we absolutely. I, I don't think the importance of the YPLF and shows and, and just reaching out to people and getting in touch mm -hmm. with people. You never know what doors it's going to open. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's very welcoming in this hobby. Absolutely. Almost without exception, everyone really wants to do whatever they can for you. Yeah. So. Well, I think that, I mean, that's, it's, that's it's, pretty much it's, our it's stories. Great to, it's great to hear your background. Maybe we can do this again sometime and, yeah. and talk about our collecting interests, our dealing interests, yeah. what it is. You know, let, 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 some, let, let you and I get to know each other a bit more and, and, and you know introduce ourselves to the listeners a bit more. Yeah. But it, it's I, I, I didn't even know your background. Again, we've been friends for for years now and I, yeah. um, I, I I didn't know your exact story so that's fascinating for me to hear as well hopefully yeah. for well we'd only too. before before doing this we'd only met we'd been friends for years but we'd only met three times before that's right we, but we I yeah. see you on social media I see yeah. you on Instagram that's every true. day so I, I feel like I, I feel like I know you but that's right, right. in New York um, in Monaco New York and then Monaco, Nebraska New York and Nebraska yeah. what a weird again that that exactly. sort of sums up the stamp yeah. world We've yeah. met three times in three completely random places. Yeah. But, you know, through the power of the internet and everything, we feel mm -hmm. like old friends. Right. And now this is happening. And now this is a lot of fun. Yeah. So this well, is great. It, it, again, it's good to learn more about you. Yeah. And you uh, well. let, let, again, let, let's do it again sometime. One of these, uh, you know, mini episodes where we, well, again, I'd love to hear more about the ins and outs of your business. You know, what do you do on a regular day? Let's, right. let's um, again, let's talk more about um, what it is we do next time. Yeah.
operational uh Oper- yes the, yeah. call a podcast operational that won't put anyone to sleep that'll <laughs> <laughs> exactly. maybe you can talk about invoicing and yeah uh, maybe some tax <laughs> regulations and stuff too while you're at it yeah um no again yeah, yeah, operational let's talk about what it's like to work for noble spirit what it's like to work for hr harmer yeah we'll do that uh on the next tiny mini episode sounds Fantastic. great well, for those listening, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify now, uh, and YouTube. And, and Podbean. Podbean, yes. And for those who want to reach out to us, uh, flatlypodcast at gmail.com. And we should have a website now. Uh, website will By the time this be, launches, yeah. The link will be in the description. Link will be in the description. I've, never, I've watched countless YouTubers say that. Mm-hmm. I've never said it myself. Link so. in bio. Link in yeah. bio. Michael, this is fun. Let's do it again soon. All right. Until next time.